In this video, I'll show you how to create my account page in your WooCommerce store using WordPress and Elementor in two ways. Hey guys, what's up? This is Michaela from Simplifying Websites. And before I start the tutorial, I'm going to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So that's it. Let's get to the tutorial now. I'm here on the Fina Estampa website, which is an online store that I taught you how to create with WordPress and Elementor. And I'll leave the link to that tutorial on the card or in the description if you want to go and learn. So here I already have my account page created, which I taught you how to create in the tutorial. But I'm going to teach you again here. I'm going to teach you how to create it this way, which is done only with the Elementor widget. And I'm going to teach you how to create another customized layout too, okay? So come on, you're going to go to your My Account page, click on Edit Page at the top. Then click up there, it'll look like this. It'll look like this. You'll click on Edit with Elementor. If you have Elementor Pro, you can just come here to Settings first. Leave the page width at Elementor Full Width or at Default, so that the header and footer continue to appear. And then you click here, click on Flexbox, take a container with the down arrow, come here to Advanced, let's put a padding, which is a spacing inside the container. I've set it to 50, then you'll come to the library and get the widget from my account. This widget already comes with Elementor Pro, so you can configure it however you like. It looks like this, by default, as it usually does in WooCommerce. And then if you want to configure it, you can come here in the panels. Each of the tabs can be renamed here, changed, capitalized, lowercased, whatever you want. As with mine, I wanted it to be small. So instead of leaving the control panel, I left just the panel. In the others, I left just one word. Except for account details, which I left at account details. So, if yours is in English, for example, you can just click and translate it here, okay? And then under more options, you can activate it here so you can customize it. And here you can choose a template in case you've made another template to apply here. Under layout, you can tell whether you want it to be vertical, which is like this on the side, or horizontal, which is the way it is there at the top. Okay. And then you also choose whether you want them all to be centered here or spaced apart or all aligned here or all aligned there. Okay. I'll leave it centered here. Here I'll go to Style, and here you can set the width. If you want a border here for each of the items, you come and set it here. Then you come and set the width of the border, set the color of the border. I'll leave no border. Here's the roundness. I'm going to leave 30 to make it round. This is the color of the tabs. So here in Normal, I'm going to leave it the same gray it is. Here in Hover, which is the action of hovering the mouse over the background color, I'm going to click. I'm going to click on the little world and I'm going to take the purple color that I've already set. If you don't have it, just click and paste the color here. I chose a color here. And then when I move the mouse, it looks like this. I'll choose the one up there so it doesn't get in the way. That's it. It looks like this. And here in active, which is how it looks when you're stopped in each tab, I'm also going to set the background type to purple. And then in each of the tab types, we can also configure the fonts. So in normal, I'm going to come here. I'm going to set the typography to 600 weight. Here in hover, I'll set the font color to white. Then when I move the mouse, it turns purple with a white font. Here in active, it's the same. I'm going to set the font color to white. Then it'll look like this. Then here in padding, which is the spacing inside the buttons, I want to make them a bit wider. So I'm going to set the spacing to 10 for all of them. I'll click here to unlink. And then on the left and right, I'm going to leave 30 padding. There it's wider, and I'll increase the spacing between them. That's it. Here you set up the Sections tab, which is the content that appears below. Then you can set a shadow for the block, if you want, a border, the width of the border, a rounding. I'm going to set a rounding of 10, a padding of 50 as well. And the color, I'm not going to add any color, I'll leave it as it is. But if you want, you can add a background color here too, 
I'm going to leave it white. I'm just going to leave the color of the border with the default color that it already has. And here you can configure the typography. These are the section titles. So you can come here and set it up. Then you can change the font. And here you can change the typography. But you have to pay attention because, for example, here the typography is for the section titles. Sometimes you change something here and then you can't see the result there. For example, I'm going to change to this font here. And oh, I'm changing the size here and you can't see any changes. Why is that? The title, if I'm not mistaken, will only appear here. See? Which is this title here where it says delivery address. So I can see changes here. So you have to pay attention because sometimes you're changing something here and you can't see it just because it's not in the right place. Okay? Here now, the typography of the general text. Then I'm going to change it to Poppins. Then I'll change the rest. That panel has also been changed. So I can change the color here. And then I can see these changes here too. Because this default text is on all of them. Here the login message. The login message will only be there in the login tab. So in order to see how it looks, you have to leave part of the website logged out. So you can see the changes. Then you can leave a page in an incognito tab and then it will update and you'll be able to see it. There are also checkboxes here so you can change them one by one and then change the tabs, refreshing them for you to see. So checkboxes, which is when you have the option to select something, radio buttons, I don't have any option here to select that. So if I make any changes, I won't be able to see it because I don't have any settings that I've made that allow me to select something. But if I activate any plugins or settings that require me to select something, then I'll be able to see those changes here. Link configuration. It usually takes the color that is already configured on the website. You can come and change it here too, change it to this purple color, and you can also change the typography of the link text only here. Oh. Change the color. It usually takes the default website settings from the link here. So if you want to change the typography here on the link part, first you update it, then you come here to these three tabs, website settings, then there will be typography here, then there will be link here. Then you can come here and change the typography of just the links, but then it changes the whole website. If you change it here, it changes there and also on the whole website. If I put a decoration here, for example, underlined, then all the links on the website will be underlined. Okay? So anything you want to change permanently on all the links, you can change here. Okay? I had shown you the tabs up here, but I hadn't done it. So this is it. It's standard. You change to the font you want. First I'm going to change to this poppins. And then here, you change the size. Here, you change the weight. If you want it thinner, if you want it thicker, and then you change the thickness of the font here. Okay? So basically, you make the settings here. When there's a form, as there is here in the address section, you can modify the forms here. If you want, for example, to make the fields rounded, if you want, for example, to put a border on the fields, you come here and set it up. So you can do all the configuration of the forms here via this forms tab and here order details. It's here in the order section. Then you can configure it here. You can see the spacing between the lines, the typefaces, as well as the titles of each one. Here the title of the total. So you can change the color here so you can identify which one it is. And then you come and make the other changes. Come here and change the text and everything else. So this is how it looks if you use Elementor Pro and then you just come, click here, put it in mobile, tweak it a bit. At most, you'll need to tweak the font size and also the contender. We put 50 padding spacing. It's too big. Here you can leave the padding at 15. And then the buttons here, you come, Click here on my account item, come here in the tab section, then you come here in the spacing, 
reduce the spacing between them a bit so they're not too far apart. And you can also come here and change it. Or if you leave it here in this one, it's completely one below the other. If you leave it like this, it's more towards here. So if you leave it here, Sometimes it's better to put it here on mobile. You can also reduce the spacing of this little space where the buttons are, okay? And here the position of the text, whether it's on one side, the other, or centered. So you can do that here. Now if you want to customize the layout the way you want, you can do it like this. First you'll click, you'll get a flex box, a container with the down arrow. You'll come here in advanced, you'll put 50 padding, You'll come here in the container. You'll search here for shortcode. You'll drag a shortcode here. Then you can go to Google and search for WooCommerce My Shortcode. Account. And there are several websites that have this here. Even on the WooCommerce website, there are several My Account shortcodes here. So here, just copy this one and come here and paste it. And then it'll take the WordPress default. You'll update it. You'll come here to your website. You'll click here on the My Account page to update. This is what WooCommerce defaults to. Then you'll leave this page open. Don't reload it so that you can get the links. Okay? And now you're going to click here on More. You're going to click, you're going to click on Flexbox. You're going to get a container with the little arrow horizontally. Then you're going to come here to the library. You're going to get an icon box here. You're going to drag it here. Then you're going to come here first. You're going to delete this description, then you can duplicate all the cards until you leave six options, which is one for each tab. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I already have the six options. Then I'm going to come to each of them and send the SVG icon. Then you can add an icon for each of the tabs you want. If you want to take the Elementor ones, you can click here too and choose from Elementor. For example, from the panel. You can take a box icon, for example, which people usually put here in the panel section. Then you come and change the title to panel. Here, you're going to make the orders tab. You change the title. Then you can change the icon to cart, which is a cart. Then you can choose the type of cart you want. And then if you want to add a custom one, you click on send SVG icon, and then you send a custom one. So for example, like here, I have this cart but it would have to be a different kind of trolley. It would have to be a cart without that little plus icon here. So it doesn't symbolize that the person has to click and buy, add it to the cart. It would have to be like the one over there. So you could go, for example, to Flaticon, which is an icon website. Then you search for cart, and there will be several icons. I'll leave these icons here on our drive for you. You'll find them in the support material below. The website I'm showing you here is a paid website, but there are lots of free websites where you can download very pretty SVG icons for free. There's already a video here on the channel teaching you how to do this, how to download free SVG icons. So, I'll leave the icons for you, and I'll download some of this flat icon here for myself. That's it, I've added all the icons and changed all the titles on mine. It's nice that you have icons with the same layout. So you see that these are all leaked? So it would be nice if you put, for example, a hollow icon, which is drawn with just one line, and an icon like this, which is all filled in. So put them all in the same layout so they don't look too disproportionate. So now you're going to come here. I'll put in this first one. I'm going to come here in style. Here you can change the color of the icon if you want. Here you can change the size of the icon. Make it bigger or smaller. I'll leave it at 40. Here's the content which is the text that's there. So here you can change the typography. I'm going to make it 15, I'll leave it at 600. And here's the spacing between the title and what's underneath. Except we've removed the description, so you don't need to. And here is the spacing between the icon and the title. You come and set it up here. This is the box, which is where these icons are. So you can come here, leave it centered, here it says whether you want the icon to be on the side, on top, on one side or the other. I'm going to leave it at the top, which I think looks better. And then you can come here in advanced, in padding. I'm going to leave padding at 30. Here in border, 
You can put a shadow on the box. It looks like this. I'm going to come here with the color. I'm going to reduce this color a lot so that it's very light, very subtle. Just like this. I'm going to reduce it here to vertical. So that the shadow is lower, I'm going to come back here to the color, which I think is still a little dark. I'm going to reduce it a lot. It looks like this. And I'll leave the rounding at 10. I'll come here in this container. I'll come here in layout. I'll change the layout to grid. If yours isn't showing this, you have to go here in your WordPress panel. Go here to Elementor, Settings. Go to Resources and leave Grid Container here. Leave it active. Scroll down and click on Save. That's where this grid option appears, so that we don't have to do the math to set the size of all the items. I want them all to be on the same line. By default, they put three columns here, but I'm going to leave six columns. And rows, I'll leave just one row. He's already set it up perfectly for me. It's even set up the space nicely. I'm going to right click here, click on copy, right click and paste the style into all the others. Do you see that this one has two lines? I'll come here to style content, typography. I'm going to make it a bit smaller decreasing the size a lot here to 12. It's getting quite small and yet it's not breaking the line. So I'm going to come here to advanced. I'm going to reduce the spacing a little. Reduce it to 25 and it won't break the line. So I'm going to take this setting here, click on copy and click on paste in the others so that the others have the same spacing and font size too. That's it. One thing too, I'm going to come in advanced, border, the shadow. I reduced it too much and ended up with no shadow at the top. So now it is. So I left the shadow here at vertical 4 so that it would go down a bit, but still have a little shadow up there, because the others are practically white. So I'm going to copy and paste the style. Great. Now I need to make it clickable. I'll come here to each of the items. I'll come here to content and here's a link. On this page that we've left, I'm going to click on each one, the panel. I'm going to right click, copy the link address and click paste. Then, in each of these tabs, I'm going to right click, copy the link address and paste it here in the link tab of the other cards. I'll do it on all of them. That's it. Once that's done, now I'm going to click on plus up here. I'm going to click, get a container with the little down arrow. I'm going to come here to advanced. I'm going to put 35 here for padding. I'm going to come to style, background type, color. I'll take this color. Black widget that I have here, I'm going to come here to the library. I'm going to take the title widget, drag it here. I'm going to come here to dynamic tag. I'm going to come here to website. User information, I'm going to click, I'm going to choose display name information, and there you see it, it's displaying my username. Then I'm going to click, I'm going to come to advanced, before that I'm going to put hello, comma, and space. And then it will say hello, and here it will put the person's name, in this case mine, Michaela. Or it will take the username of the person who has written it. If you haven't written anything, it's because you haven't put the username in yours, you've just put the email, so you go into WordPress and set it up. The client won't have the option of not having a username. Every time they register, it will be compulsory for them to enter a username. Then you can come here to style. I'm going to change the color here to white. I'm going to change the typography here to poppins. Weight. 400. I'm going to leave it at size 20. I'm going to come here to transformation. I'm going to let it capitalize so that it picks up the capital letter there, even if it was written in lowercase. I'm going to come back to content. I'm going to let it center. And then it'll look like this. It'll pick up the person's name. Then I'll come back here to this container. I'm going to come here in advanced. I'm going to unlink the padding values. And then at the bottom, I'm going to leave 90 padding. Then I'm going to come here to this bottom container. I'm going to come to advanced. I'm going to unlink the margin values, which is the outside spacing. And here at the top, which is the top, I'm going to put a negative margin. 
Then notice that the cards are becoming transparent up here. We forgot to set their background color, so we'll come here to style, in fact, here to advanced, background, background type, and we'll set a color. Then I'll click on copy and paste the style into all the others. Okay, look, there it is with the cards going over that color there. Okay, but then the content is repeating itself. For example, Hello Michaela is repeating itself down here. So we have to exclude both these titles that we have here because they're already up there. So we have to make a CSS code to exclude that from here. So I'm going to click up here. I'm going to go to Advanced. I'm going to go to Custom CSS. And I'm going to paste in a code that excludes that. I already have this code here in our channel drive. This is the channel drive, which has free material here for you, from all the classes I always give, okay? So you can come here, it's inside my account folder, so you can come here, search for my account folder, which is this one, if you don't find it, you can press Ktol and F, type my up there, and it will show you here. Then you'll click on it, there'll be the CSS code that I'm going to leave, just copy it, you can close this tab, then you can come here and paste it. Then it will delete all that little text up there. Well, if I click here on the little I, then I'll be able to see it, okay? Then I've updated it. If I come here to my account page, I'll click on it, and it'll change the tab, download, account details, points. It'll change here for me, and it'll only change the bottom part and the top part will stay, okay? Now you just have to change the mobile, click here on responsive mode, change it there to phone or tablet, then you'll just need to change it here. So I'm going to come here in this container, I'm going to come here in layout, it's in a grid here. Here in columns, you can change it right here. Oh, I'm going to leave three columns. If we make the icon smaller, we can leave three columns and two rows. Then I'll come here to style, you have to click on the little icon first. Then I'll come here to style icon, icon size. I'll reduce its size a lot. Then I'll right click here, click on copy, right click and click on paste the style, paste the style, paste the style, paste the style. Then I can come here to this main container, I turn to layout and here. In columns, I can unlink the values and then I can increase the value of the column space. I can also control the line space here. Another thing I can change is to go to each of the items, go to advanced and decrease the padding which is the space inside. So I can leave, let's see, 15 padding, click on copy, then click on paste the style. I'll change the padding of everyone. Then everyone gets a smaller size. I can also make another change. I can come here in each of the items. Come in style. Icon. The spacing between the title and the icon. I can decrease. I can even put a negative value here. If I want. So that it's even closer to the icon. And then the size of each card will be even smaller. Paste the style. Paste and paste. I can do it like this. Then if you want. You can also reduce the title of each one. I'll leave it like this. And then here. For you to make this modification, right? You can't change it here. You have to change it in the themes default settings. I'm going to click on the container here. I'm talking about the themes default settings. The size of the text here. Okay? Mine's fine. I'll leave it at that size. I'm going to click here on this container. I'm going to go to advanced, I'm going to put 20 padding to reduce that space that was here and then it will look like this. It's already set up here for our mobile, the rest of the spacing is okay. And then you can change it for the tablet too, but it's basically already set up. I recommend that you just reduce the size of the fonts. That might improve it, okay? But everything else is fine. And that's how your page will look. Of course, you can change the color and the spacing however you want. But just to give you an idea of how you can make a customized layout here. So, that's basically it. You'll create the cards and then the link. You'll always leave this tab here open so you can copy the link. Then you copy the link for each one. 
paste it here on the cards and to take over the part that they also appear below you go to the advanced CSS and paste that CSS to exclude that part okay then in the case of this type of customized layout you need to make another configuration because look if you log out of the website this tab will still appear up here only the content won't appear down here and that shouldn't happen only this form should appear it should only appear like this and for you to hide this part here for users who aren't logged in there's already a video here on the channel teaching you how to do this and I'll leave the link to this video fixed here in the comments okay just so you can learn how to hide this part from people who aren't logged in so that's it guys I really hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like here on the video subscribe to the channel hugs see you next time bye